Okay, so far everything we've talked about are all the, the basics. Okay, all the equations okay, for equilibrium, um, rigid bodies versus particles, and all that. Those are the foundations. Right? Those are the theory, and it's extremely important. Okay, make sure that you are really comfortable and familiar with you know the uh, the theory and the math behind it. Now. For the rest of the semester, we'll talk about applications. We're going to apply everything we've learned so far into real world you know, structures. Okay? Beginning in chapter 6, okay, we're going to talk about structural analysis. Now, this chapter is split into two parts. The first part, which is really the bulk of it, is called a truss. Okay? And the second part, frame and machine. They're quite similar, and the major difference is. For truss, we're dealing with two force body, a okay, two force rigid body. Okay, if you recall, um, in the last uh, chapter talked about two and three force rigid bodies. Well, get this: the two force body, okay, are basically uh, what make up a truss. If a frame of machines, there are three or more force bodies. Okay, so let's talk about this later. First, a truss. A truss could look something like this. Okay, it's just a bunch of rigid bodies connected together. Okay, for each piece of rigid body, it's called a member. The point where two or more rigid bodies, okay, two or more members are joined together, it's called a joint. Okay, so a truss simply just um, is made out of a bunch of members and a bunch of joints. That's all. So this is just one of many, many examples of the truss. Okay. So this truss is made out of uh, these members like that, and then here in the middle of the truss we have, in the middle of this member we have another member and okay, connecting to it. Okay. Now a subcategory of truss. It's called simple truss. It's simple because, well, compare this picture to the picture. This is simpler than that because here, for a simple truss, all the forces okay, or loading are applied at joint only. Okay, and it could look something like this versus the more general truss up here. So this member right here, the loading occurs at this point, at this joint right here, and this joint, as well as somewhere in the middle. Okay? And also I could actually apply an external force, right? Right in the middle of this member right here. Right? So in this case, that's not a simple truss. A simple truss is where all the forces are applied at joint only. Yeah, here I've labeled all the joints A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. So, based on this definition, the result is each member is a two-force rigid body. Okay, it's a two-force member. Okay. So, being a two-force rigid body, so I can just draw uh, this member A, B, for example. Okay and draw the forces on it. Now, since each force is applied at a joint, okay, so I have this force coming this way and then the other force coming the other way. Okay? So it's a two force body and the requirement for a two force rigid body is that these two forces must be acting along the same line of action. Okay? Which means that they have to be pointing along the same direction as this AB member is oriented. Okay, if this AB is, let's say, a 45 degree angle, then FAB must also be 45 degree angle. Okay, and that other force must be acting opposite to this force direction. Okay, so that in the end, they both cancel out. So that in the end, this member AB 
will be in equilibrium. Okay? So there's no net force and no net moment either. So the result is AB being in stationary condition, okay? Equilibrium condition. Okay? So <clears throat> with that said, you can compare these two cases right here. Right? This case and this case, they're both two force members, right? A B with these two forces coming in, in this way. The bottom picture is also two force okay, uh, picture, but with the two forces pointing away from this rigid body. And they're both okay. And they are completely opposite from one another. In this case it's called compression loading. Okay? Where both of these forces are acting toward each other creating a tendency to compress this member AB. Okay, that's why this force FAB is called compressive force. This bottom picture shows that this force AB is a tensile force. Okay, so this member AB is under tension. Okay, so in a simple truss, the only two possible loading situations it can be either under compression or tension. Okay? Each member can only be under compression or tension.